Right, here we are again. Um, the thing with these videos that I'm finding is that I'm remembering things afterwards that I should have put in or I've said something and watched it back and then missed missed something as well. So um, you'll have to forgive me, we'll get better at that. Um, in the last video about pricking out, I, I said that there were two ways to do it and then I showed you one, which is typical. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you the second one, which is... <coughs> It's if you're a bit more confident, uh, once you've had a lot of practice and you're doing quite a lot of them and you don't want to do the individual pricking out uh, method. Um, so I'll show you this one. So we've, what we've got is we, I'm now doing them on the front facing camera. So the first ones I did on the backwards facing camera, but then you couldn't see everything. So it was a bit of a problem really. And I'm trying to wedge it up there and play, uh, in the sort of in this frame that I made I'm trying to wedge it up anyway so what we've got is we've got some chilies there which I'm hoping you can see in the light because the light's a bit a bit strange there's a bit of cloud a bit of sun um, so some chilies that probably wanted pricking out earlier really um, the different sizes probably got a bit big uh, there's some roots coming out of the bottom I you probably can't see that but there's a few roots coming out of the bottom um, the, a chilli called but Jolikia the cord, which was I do I think I don't think it is right now, but it was at one point very recently the hottest chili in the world. So we'll see how we go with those. So what you want to do is you've got loads of them in a pot, multiple. There's one, two, three, four, four in there. If you want to try and get your fingers, we can knock off some of this perlite. You want to try and get your fingers between them, best you can. So there you go. So move them between them, not on top of them. And be as gentle as possible. Keep forgetting the camera's on that side. Uh, and then once you've done that, you tip it upside down. And because they're quite well rooted, they've stayed. Oop, there they've dropped. So they come out like that. And in fact, you can see the roots of each individual one's coming down there. Like that. Of each. What you can do then is you can, you can either put it down and individually if you try and take this small one you can just break it off you can hold the seed leaf we'll hold the seed leaf there if you can those big ones but if not you can hold a, a new true leaf and you can just gently take it out like that and it looks a bit like that so there there it is and we can pop that up what I sometimes do with these is, if there's a lot congested and you can't get between them both, between them all, not both, between them all, is you can just gently, gently, uh, do it here, you can see it, gently drop it like that. And this should, hopefully, still need a bit of teasing apart because I said they've probably been in a bit long, really. And they've got quite a good root system. In fact, you can tell they've been in a bit long because they're a bit pale. The leaves are a, a little bit pale, so they're probably running out of nutrients in that pot and they want their own. So, what you want to do is take them. You can either leave it in a clump like that or you can separate them all up separately. And there's a little one there now. I'm going to get rid of that because it's obviously weaker, much weaker than the rest. Because compared to that, look at the size of that, that one's grown quite a substantial size in the same amount of time so that's obviously weaker so I'm going to get rid of that as we say game over for that one so I've got four we'll get as pom pot so same size I've got a mix of compost so I've got some of the perlite that's come out from the others from the other compost uh, from the tops of these that'll be fine that'll add some uh, it'll help the drainage and it'll hold on to nutrients as well We've got some of the comp the coconut compost, so that's the coir stuff there. And I've got some multi-purpose compost there, peat-free multi-purpose. I think that one's from B and Q. Um, and then I give it a good a good mix up, so it's got the benefits of a lot. Because remember the coir, there's no um, nutrients in that, but there is in. Um, in the multi-purpose compost. So we're going to fill it up a little bit, maybe half, 
see that there and you're going to lift the plant gently and again we can pot it up up to the first leaves any deeper and it might rot there you go any deeper it might rot uh, but it might well grow some roots from there and it'll make it a sturdier plant if we can sink it lower so hold it in gently sprinkle some compost around give it a bit of a tap down and then you're going to gently have to push it down and then top it up again give it a tap like off the edges lift out any buried leaves there we go and try and get it in the middle again then it gives you some kind of production sort of garden centre type quality plant there we go and we're going to label that one remember you label every single one because you might be growing multiple chilies and it's easy to get mixed up i've done it before loads of times myself right there's another way to do it which is you can fill the pot right to the very top there like that so just give it a tap down to settle the compost and you can get your dibber like that again plastic one or uh, one of my good friends david once david bought me this in a kit that's quite a nice thing to use uh, particularly if you've got something a bit bigger so in the middle we're going to make a hole like that see it and we're going to gently lift this plant a seedling there and you can gently ease it in with your fingers or with your dibber you can just gently push it down you can line it up a bit in the middle put a bit of compost back on top if you need to and then we'll label that we'll do the other two uh, and I'll put them in the greenhouse for now because um, it's it's still too cold for them to go outside probably we're looking at June beginning of June if they can go outside in fact these but jolly keys which They'll probably want a lot more heat, so they'll probably have to stay in the greenhouse all the time. I've never had any real success growing chilies just outside. Uh, but I'll give them a water, I must give them a water next uh, to reduce the shock of them being dug up and moved. Cheers.